Hi, I'm Alison Gardner and I'm the Director of Sales of the Brisbane Convention Exhibition Centre. Here at BCEC we have the privilege of knowing many of Brisbane and Australia's great scientists. And Professor Ian Fraser is a long time friend of BCEC. Ian is a clinical scientist and he's globally known as the co-inventor of the first cancer vaccine, which is for cervical cancer. Professor Ian Fraser, welcome. Well, thank you for having me along, Alison. It's, it's great to see you. So, Ian, multiple vaccines now seem to be absolutely on the brink of release. How do you see the state of play currently? Look, it's really exciting at the moment, Alison. We have three vaccines that have reported effective ability to protect against getting COVID-19 disease and all three of them are about 90% effective which is much better than we could have hoped for. So could we be in a situation where we personally are administered multiple vaccines or should we be just taking the first one that comes out? Well the three vaccines two of them are very similar to each other and the third one is quite fundamentally different and each of those are different from other ones under development. So that it really is going to be a case of stick with one product because that's the way that you're going to get the most effective immunity. We don't yet know which one is going to be most effective, so it will probably be the first one that gets into Australia that will be the one that will be most extensively used here. The big advantage of the live viral vectors is speed to getting it out there. I mean, the big, you know, once a phase three trial is finished, you've still got to manufacture enough vaccine yeah. to do something useful and making multiplying up live viral vectors in the lab is much quicker than making lots of protein. So that that might make a difference of as much as six months as a, or a year before we actually get a product out in large numbers. Mm. Does that mean we could start with a certain vaccine and then in another 12 months we're actually taking a different one? That seems very likely, so long as it's done in that order, a viral or RNA vaccine first and then protein vaccine second, that seems a logical way to do things. The other way around probably wouldn't be quite so good, and particularly the adenovirus-based vaccine has a problem already in that you have to give a half dose for the first shot to get full efficacy because the second dose of the vaccine will kill off the first dose of the vaccine if a full dose of vaccine is given at that time and the vaccine then turns out to be less effective. Back to this issue of uh, people talk about eradication versus control, mm. is eradication even remotely possible without a vaccine? I don't know if it's even possible with a vaccine, mm. uh, to be realistic, uh, because it's an upper respiratory tract infection when it starts and we have not yet managed to stop ourselves getting the common cold and flu, both of which are upper respiratory tract infections where we've tried to get vaccines. I think we've got to be realistic and say that a really good outcome would be a vaccine that stops us getting sick with this virus. And are there some, uh, I guess, leading areas within Australia where they're, they're really making headway on, on that? Yeah, look, I think that behind the scenes, I mean, everybody talks about vaccines, but behind the scenes, more effort is going into developing antiviral drugs, I suspect, than is in going into developing effective vaccines, mm. simply because in the long term, everybody knows that that's what we will need. And the, it's a slow process because basically you have to understand more about the, the basis of how the virus works as a virus and then come up with a drug which will block that but not do any damage to the person that's infected with the virus. Will you yourself be returning to conferences in Australia in the next year? Yes, I hope so. I mean, if there are conferences running, we'll go. We, I, w I would certainly feel quite comfortable going to them. And I don't see that there's any reason not to. Uh, obviously, all conferences, as with all activities, involve lots of people who have a COVID safe plan in place. Yeah. And I think that's going to be the solution to making it safe for people to go to conferences again. Uh, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity of actually really interact with my colleagues in a way other than by Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, thank you very much. Really appreciate the time you've taken with us today and um, look forward to seeing you in the building again soon. Well, thank you, Alison. It's been a pleasure.